Hello, welcome back to my channel, Omni. I'm Bridget. Let's get on with episode seven of The Untamed. Lan Wanji's ancestor, the only female leader, is still filling him in on all the details of the past. And doing a great job, I might add. I like how they unite in purpose right here on the spot. So not only did he join <laughs> Lan Wanji's family, but he joined him in life purpose. So that's pretty awesome. Oh, he sees it as his duty to uh, go after the Yin Iron. This is such a Lord of the Rings shot. Oh, what's going on with him? 720. Something's going on with Winning. The yin iron must be affecting him. His eyes were weird. And they fall out of the cave just like that. I love how he falls on top of Lan Wan Chi and feels the need to apologize. And of course, that dirty look Lan Wan Chi gives him. He apologizes, but he doesn't get up. <laughs> a day and a night has passed since they were in the, that cave, which means it's only been a few minutes to us, which means they are experiencing a time war. Now that has wonderful possibilities because somewhere out there, their present realities could still be unfolding if our timelines are so very different. I love that. Aw. <laughs> So much happened. His brother, Cheng Chen, is so angry with him for getting lost, which he couldn't help. Um, but I guess Cheng Chen doesn't know that. Wei Wusen jumps in and lies and says nothing's in there, just ice, and he almost froze to death, which is partially true. But, uh, but he jumps in and lies so that Lan Wan Ji doesn't have to. I love that. He turns around and smiles at Lan Wan Ji like, see, see, I took care of you, didn't I? Oh. See, Lan Wan Ji, he has his uses. Other than being eye candy, he, he really is helpful sometimes. Oh my God. He, he bumps Lan Wan Ji in the shoulder and basically says, I was right. Uh -uh. His brother, Lan Zichen, was keeping something from them about the yin iron. They run out to look at the bird, the, uh, the owl of doom or whatever the hell that bird's title is. But they just look like warriors in white. I love that. I love that. Warriors in white. Thought to put a deadly assassin in white, angelic white. To my culture, that's angelic. So I'm still giving them props and kudos for just creating such a lovely vision. It's really, it's really become larger than life for me. I want a mural done of Lan Wanji and Wei Wusan in their flowing robes in my home. Wei Wusen makes the three finger swear and Lan Zuchin just looks at him like, that's cute. And of course Lan Wanji has been silenced by his uncle. We'll talk about it later. And he looks like he's taking it pretty hard. <laughs> that's why he's so serious. He just, you can tell somebody yelled at him when he was little too harshly one too many times and he just he just went inside Lan Wen Ji has just watched Wei Wusun tell Niha Singh attempt to tell him what happened to them of course he's making up a story and being silly but I get the feeling that maybe at this point Lan Wan Ji has to take Wei Wusun seriously like you know like maybe he's thinking about him, catching himself thinking about him more than he normally might. You gotta respect a guy who can keep talking his way out of trouble. Oh my goodness. 
His brother says, you're familiar with Wei Wu Sen now, or you're familiar with Lan Wan Ji now. Why don't you just go to his clan? Stay at Cloud Recess. Oh, Cloud Recesses. That's a big statement. What is that? Jealousy? Is he jealous? Why would he just come out and say something like that? Aw, all his life. Wei Wu Sen, he's been the center of Wei Wu Sen's attention, probably. Him and his sister. He's not used to a third party. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that can cause tension. They'll get through it. Or they would have gotten through it. It's just what you go through. <gasps> Lin Wan Ji was standing there listening to them the whole time. Oh my gosh. The writers and creators of the show want you to know that his mind and heart is on Wei Wu Sen. It's like Yes, he is seriously having to deal with emotions. And this frame at 1645 is what you is all that we can show you of it. I love that there's so much going on behind that statuesque countenance. And I've seen enough of him now that I'm convinced there's a lot going on. So the few times that he screams or cries out or flinches or just the least little bit of extra emotion in his face is heaven to me. Oh, he's just holding everything in. I think that if I wrote a fic about him right now, a story, a fictional story, it would all center around the other characters vying to get a reaction out of him. That's that's all I want is what does it take to get him to open up? Of course, some secrets are better left not revealed. <laughs> oh. But he is that mysterious, beautiful box that sits there all shiny and lacquered and you're not supposed to touch it. And it's it's just so... Fascinating. Wow, 1655. You can see the exact point when he came to a decision. That's great acting. I don't care what you say. You're standing there like... <laughs> That's... What is his name? Wen Cheo and Evil Cutie. Wen Cheo and Zhu Yang. They're standing there like strangers in an elevator. I wonder what they're thinking. Okay, so... Xu Yang is not interested in the yin iron, and he says that he's only a small cultivator. For some reason, I thought cultivators were basically good people, but like spiritually good, but that's not a requirement, apparently, if Xu Yang can be, Xu Yang can be a cultivator. If he doesn't want the yin iron, what does he want? Just to wreak havoc? Probably. Aw. Aw. The sister and peacock. Let me find his name. Jin Zishan. Zin Zishan. The sister and Jin. Jin the peacock. They are working together. How did he manage that? Oh my gosh. He's letting her help him. Of course, Wei Wu San is glued to Lan Wan Ji's side, working on his basket. He made his lantern especially for him. Oh my gosh. I realize now that they're having an entire conversation about their future life together. Well, Wei Wu San is planning a future life together, and Lan Wan Ji is still not convinced. But the fact that he's sitting next to him and not walking away or calling him boring is progress. I'm impressed. Such a beautiful smile. That brief appearance of it at 1956. He did it so perfectly. When Lan Wan Ji smiles in this scene, if there is a straight man in this world 
who thinks that that is not beautiful and attractive and desirable, he is lying his ass off to protect his perceived masculinity. That is beautiful. Anybody would be gay for that smile, for that, oh, that awesomeness. That is as lovely, more lovely than anything on this planet. It's the red paper man again who, when he has, when he sends consciousness, becomes gold paper man. I'm really starting to like that guy. Well, I, I already have a tremendous fondness ever since the episode where, ever since the episode where he visits Jin, Jin Guagal's secret bedroom vault. I, uh, I really like that little guy. He's a great character because he's a little paper man. He's allowed to take liberties with Lan Wanji's headband and touching him that Wei Wu San is not allowed to take. That was so cute. But I'm getting ahead of myself. <gasps> Aww. It waves and bows. <laughs> if that happened in our world, we'd be trying to smash it with a book. What the fuck? What the fuck is that? <laughs> That would be scary. Oh my goodness. For she says, as for my destiny, it's not up to me. That is the saddest thing in the world to me for someone to have that sense of helplessness. Girl, you still got your passion. That's your magic. It can make things happen. It really can. C3449, she tells him he's going to have a beautiful wife someday. And he says, no, I want to stay with my sister. When siblings are that old and that close, of course that is so special. Of course, Jing Chen would not want Lan Wanji to come in between what he has with his brother and his sister. That would just feel often strange to him, that, that new energy coming into the mix. But of course... We all know you have to let your siblings go on and live independent lives. So it's an uncomfortable lesson to learn, but we learn it. I love how they appear as perfectly well-behaved siblings. Nothing has gone wrong when actually they have run the gamut. Well, Wei Wu San has run the gamut as far as misbehavior is concerned, but now they, they just look like absolute angels. So obedient and respectful. Almost everybody in the show looks older because of their costumes. When you see them behind the scenes, they look so much younger. Even uh, the uncle, Len Wanji's uncle right there looks probably 10 or 15 years younger, at least in the photograph that I saw of him behind the scenes. And Len Zinchin certainly looks, gosh, he looks really young. He looks like maybe he's in his early 20s. But you never know with these immortal, supernatural, pseudo-gods, whatever they are. And Len Wanji appears just in time to... He's not there to see him off, but it's coincidence that he's leaving at the same time they're leaving. Not really a coincidence, but a nice one anyway. I wish there'd been one shot of the servant or someone doing their hair. Just, just so you can get an idea of <laughs> what that routine would be like and how long it would take and how beautiful and elaborate it would be. Of course, they could get all those steps down in just five minutes and it would look perfect, but the hair, my goodness. Look, whispering at Lan Wanji at the last minute, at the very last minute, he's being drugged out of there and he still has to whisper some words to Lan Wanji. This is a fun relationship. He even tries to eavesdrop at 3903 to hear what Lan Wanji's brother is saying to him. At 3917, he says, 
His brother asks, he dislikes you so much, why are you why are you still trying to talk to him? And Lan Wanji or Wei Wu San says, After spending half a year with him, can't I say goodbye? So they've been there six months. And who's to say that time, they measure time the same way that we would in our world. So it's just interesting to get some idea of how long they've been there. I was thinking of summer, like it was summer camp at Cloud Recesses, but I think they've been there quite a bit longer, which is pretty cool. You really get to see what life was like before all the other stuff happens. Okay, his brother <laughs> is basically saying everyone must be happy to see you leave. And of course, ever optimistic Wei Wu San is saying, all of these people love me. They're going to miss me. <laughs> wow, Jin Ching is not very supportive. He wasn't very supportive even before all this stuff happens. Is that, that feels like it goes deeper than jealousy. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe it has something to do with, with the love competition in his father's eyes, you know, because they flash back to when they were children. So maybe there's still some some competition for his father's affection going on there. Who knows? Just guessing. Oh my God, his brother will not give it up. He says, let me ask you, why are you saying goodbye personally to Lin Wan G when there's all these other disciples? He, he for real is not letting it go. And Lan Wanji says, can't I admire his talents? I want him to turn around and say, because he's mine. <laughs> because we're together. You get the idea the brother already knows that. He's just, uh, face it, Jing Chang, you have lost Wei Wu Sun's affections to Lan Wanji. It was going to happen sometime. He still loves you, but not in the same way. <gasps> oh, he my my translation says Wei Wusan says he is my match. Nothing could be said plainer. I love how their uncle just laughs and shrugs off Wei Wusan's antics. <sighs> Let him be a child for as long as he can. That sounds silly now, but later when they're crying and you see they really are kids. They have not been tested by the world. They, they really are kids. <gasps> oh my goodness, I missed this before. Look who's standing there watching them depart. Look at that. Uh, see, it didn't matter to me before. So many scenes went by. Uh, I guess unmarked in my mind because they did not hold meaning at the time. But now that everything has so much more meaning, this is really a special scene. If you don't know anything about their relationship and you're just being introduced to it, the fact that Lan Wan Ji is standing there watching that family go, you know that there's only one person he's thinking about, and that's Wei Wu San. I think the filmmakers are being quite generous with Lan Wan Ji's expression of how much Wei Wu San has affected him. He can no longer settle for all that aloneness that he was so prepared to live out his life with. He's that's that's no longer on the tables. Oh, he's gonna miss Wei Wu San. Oh, his brother, Lan Zixin, is so perceptive. He says, should you tell Wei Wu San that you're leaving for the Yin Iron? And of course, Wei Wu San says, uh, of course, Lan Wanji says no, but, but he already sees, he knows his brother is acting funny. 
he already knows that his brother is feeling a lot of Wayusan feelings. I love, I love it when family members accept. You get the underlying idea that this society is completely accepting. I love that. That such an intimate relationship between men is just as respected as it would be if they were man and woman. And if this writer had to create a whole entire alternate universe for that to happen, then so be it. She gets to make up her own rules. I love that. Some people still need to deal with homophobia and they write about it and good for them, but I'm so over it. I grew up on coming of age shows where the parents were like, oh my God, our child is gay. And it's like, if I never see another show about someone coming to terms with what is perfectly natural to me, that will be great. So I'm past that whole controversy and I cannot wait on other people who aren't there yet to catch up with me. So, so I love a world in which two men or two women or whatever gender you want to be can feel what they feel for each other and not have to justify it or explain it to anyone. It's got me thinking, then what makes such a relationship special? Because something does, something makes it special. Something makes me reach for that kind of relationship in my entertainment, in what I read and what I watch before I'll reach for any other kind of relationship. And I'm gonna have to say the mystery of it the intrigue, even though it's it's an intrigue that comes through my perception about what I don't know, um, but it can't be had any other way. So there's still quite a bit of charm based on all the potential things that could happen between two men who care about each other especially if they're not harmoniously working together, you know, especially if at least one of them has to be persuaded to cooperate in the relationship or convinced of a relationship. It's just, it's just so much fun. I feel like I'm talking too much. Ooh, look at the sun. Look at the sun on Lan Wanji's hair as he's walking away. You know, I got to talk about how beautiful their hair is and their skin is and their lips are because so much consideration was taken with those wigs and things and their gowns and yet nobody says a word about them. They're there to speak for themselves, I guess, but I am singing the praises of <laughs> all that cathartic Beauty. I know I keep using that word too much. Beauty. Be everything is beautiful. But really, when I use that word, it's because I don't know any other better words. That word is so inadequate. I want to say it means so much more than just aesthetics. It goes so deeper. It feels so good. Think about an image. Think about an image that is absolutely disgusting. What's a disgusting image? Um, a can full of worms. Okay, picture a can full of worms. Now picture Lan Wan Ji's beautiful mouth. A mouth, lips that are so full and perfectly formed that you feel like you can see the beauty of his mother in those in those beautiful female looking lips. Because when I see a man with beautiful lips, I always think 
oh, I see his mother in him. I don't know why I do that. Well, I do know why, but it's fun. Anyway, but seriously, picture that. Now, one of those images makes you feel really good. And that feeling goes beyond aesthetically pleasing. It reaches your soul. You couldn't feel that way if something inside you didn't line up in such a wonderful way. Whereas the other image causes you to feel yuck. You feel that. That's not just... That doesn't just stay on the screen or on the paper. It's... You internalize it. So... When I say something is beautiful, the energetic equivalent is far greater than what the eyes can see. It's, it's a far greater appeal than anything aesthetic. It goes beyond beauty. I just, in my humble vocabulary, I don't have the words to describe how awesome the sunset is in this shot as he's walking away. And maybe my reactions are too verbal. Like I, I talk about stuff too much and explain stuff too much. But if we're not here to talk about the wonderful brownish gold highlights brought out in Lan Wanji's hair as he is walking away with all of his robes flowing brilliantly in the sunlight, then I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what we're here for. So I have to talk about it. Bunny bunnies, bunny bunnies. He's sitting with the bunnies. <laughs> I wanna hold those rabbits so bad. I'm thinking of visiting a pet store. <laughs> He's talking to the rabbit and he realizes that Lan Wanji is about to go off by himself in search of the yin piece. One of the yin pe missing yin pieces. And that's it. It's over. That's it. That's all for episode seven. On to episode eight.